audience, we're here today talking with the artist Victor Ejimeno about his new exhibition uh, opening at Terraculture on May the 24th. The exhibition is titled Mirrors and Mirages. For how long have you, for the benefit of our viewers, been a practicing visual artist? As long as I can remember, but I started making money from art as early as when I was nine years old because I would take a plastic camera and start taking my friends' photographs in primary school, then go back home and actually draw like caricatures and give it back to them, they actually pay me for it. But in a more, to, I mean like, in a more professional way, you know, like kind of living off of art without really having to rely on anything, uh, I can say, since 97. It's the idea of um, uh, mirrors, mirages, memory. Mm -hmm. Is memory itself not a kind of mirage sometimes? Memories are kind of like mirages because it's not exactly, there's no way except it's recorded. As for the human mind, except it's purely recorded, things shift. Memories shift. You try to capture them all the time and what I'm trying to do is try to distill the memories that I've had. Uh, I was struck by this thing you said in this, this interview about. Yes. Since we choose what to remember and what to forget, yes. I use my art to define what I have not forgotten. forgotten. You know, it's where I'm coming from, what has defined Victor Hikameno, um, family, friends, country. Uh, you have uh, works inspired by Christopher Kibo, yes. widely believed to be Nigeria's greatest poet who we lost in the Biafran War. Yes. I realized that each time I read him, I'm inspired to go back and paint something and go at a certain point where people can understand where I'm coming from, then just completely get myself lost in the world. And um, in 2006, during 2007, during his uh, foundation, the first inauguration of his foundation in New York, I was invited to exhibit some of my works. How did you choose which pieces best captured the area? The moment. I have to look at some of the works that were influenced by, by him. If I'm not reading him, I'm probably listening to Fela, which is another, 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 story, another story entirely. And uh, Obiora Dechuku, that was the first time he was seeing my works because he was having an exhibition in New York at the period. So he came and, um, you know, so he shook his head. He was like, you're doing something very interesting, you know. So coming from uh, old prof, uh, one of our masters, that was kind of very, very... Um, validating for me. So the works that are going to be exhibited in um, Mirrors and Mirages, yes. are they largely, have they been largely created whilst you were in Nigeria, you arrived in Nigeria? Half of them, I would say about half of the works are, are created while here in Nigeria. And the uh, other parts were already when I had my mindset to return home because my coming back to Nigeria didn't happen uh, over yes. How much does music influence your your art. A lot, because in America, that is the only way I can transport myself back home. You know, because if I'm playing fella, I'm in the streets of Lagos, I'm, 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 I'm in touch with what he's talking about. Then when I move to like somebody like Sonia Ade, that talking drum, there's something about the talking drum that actually talks to you. But can music not also take you to another time? Yes, in Victor, um, Victor book gave me a CD of Fresh Lawson and I realized each time I was playing it, I was back to like when I was five, when I first heard those so music in gramophone. Give me um, an example of all of your works yeah. that for you was so deeply inspired by music. One of them is uh, Many Rivers to Cross. Many Rivers to Cross is when I'm listening to my traditional Benin music. Many Rivers to Cross, I'm thinking of the River Niger, I'm thinking of Ikboba River, I'm thinking of the times when there were no bridges and how were these people crossing these places. And I'm thinking of where do we start from now? Because we still have many rivers to cross to get to where we actually want this country to be. Is home still what it was when you were away from this immediate environment? Home has changed, uh, which is why I titled this exhibition Mirrors and Mirages. Because we always have that perfect notion. Yeah, when, that, that, yes, that, that kind of like uh, home is utopia. And uh, when you are in America, you think when you come home, all your problems, all your psychological problems are solved. And you come here, it's a different type of psychological attack that you get. Let's come to some of the works that viewers will be able to see in this exhibition. Okay. 
mirrors and mirages. Let's talk about arranged marriage. I see that the whole thing, you know, when we get there, you know, there is really no other way most of the time for you to probably get a green card. Mm -hmm. And why do you really want a green card? Sometimes you can have jobs. You can do jobs that will make life convenient for you and everything without really having papers. You realize that the whole point why you are struggling to marry an American citizen that is probably going to be a noose on your neck is because you want to be able to come back home. Uh, there's a noose in this painting and um, you, know, you have a white woman on one side and you have a black man on the other side and the whole background is the notion of the black continent, the home, you understand, that you yearn to come back to, but he, in the middle of it, there's that white space, which is like the white mass country, where you are struggling to create a new reality. Why is this black man a black bottle? Black bottle, are you CK black, are you CK black bottle as, as a fragrance? A it's a Calvin Klein uh, bottle, which is a fragrance that I used, and uh, it was the empty bottle. And when the fragrance is gone, when you get into this marriage, and the woman, the white woman, I probably think uh, this is... When the honeymoon is when over. When the honeymoon is over, and the fragrance is out of the bottle, what do you do with the bottle? You, I also wanted to talk about um, deep cut. Yes. Uh, in which I noticed that you signed it at the bottom. Yes. Your signature yes. is there, so we know it's by you. Yeah. But within the frame of the work itself, Deep Cut, the name Victor occurs there. Deep Cut is important to me because it's the last piece of work I did in America before I left. And I was, it's a lino cut, I was carving it, just the very last line that I wanted to put across like, okay, I'm, I'm on my way home. It was a straight line starting from the bottom of the lino all the way to the top. And I was careful doing it because I used sharp uh, knife, sharp object to carve this thing. And like it went straight right in my thumb. I sliced the whole thing all the way and there was blood all over my studio. So <laughs> I had not named the work. So I just continued working, you know, I like, had this thing and I carved my name into it. This is my final signature in America and I called it a deep cut. You're also looking with some nostalgia at yeah. the African past, aren't you? Yes. Um, I can mention specifically the word when you were prophets. Yes. I'm a Christian. I believe in the whole tenet from the whole nine years. You understand? But there were things that worked for us. You understand? We had our own reality. You understand? We had our own prophets. I grew up in the village. You understand? People, there are people that spoke and things happened. You understand? So, are we completely going to erode that whole thing? Or is there a space? It's like going to the Oba Benin uh, 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 Palace and burning the whole thing down. But it's happening. You understand? It's happening. It's and, not and with the Oba Benin. Yes. It's happening with other palaces. Exactly. In the Southwest especially. So, as an artist, I feel that is, 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 um, is an attack on the creativity. Which brings us nicely to the last work I'd like to discuss, uh, their point of view. I called out this, these pictures, these naked women, from, from magazines that were published in mainstream, national magazines, National Highly Geographic. Influential publication. Influential publication. I'm like, what are they trying to tell the school kids that were reading these things are still reading them till today? Okay. You move on, okay, I said, okay, this is, you are talking about the origin of fabrics and, and, and cloth making in, in, in Africa. And to illustrate the Adirez and the showcase, the women were not wearing any top. They were just like, here, yeah. I said, is this the best way you can illustrate this? What exactly is your point of view? I should just ask you at this point about your visual arts practice, your poetry, your fiction, how do you juggle all of that? And does one feed into the other? I'm like a polygamist that has three to four wives and you have to find a way to satisfy all of them and have them bear children for you, you know? So, so that is the same approach I, I give to them. Finally, what do you want? viewers to take away from this exhibition. I, I don't want to like dictate for people. I don't want to tell them what to take out of it. I've, I've done my best as much as I can. I've put myself out there and it's my first exhibition in the country. And um, you know, I, I just want people to see who I am and where I'm coming from. Mirrors and Mirages by Victor Epikomeno is a third culture and it opens up 
points of being, which was false. 